are salt and you are light. And I found it so interesting when Jesus said about these two uh, entities that we don't truly understand what that means. So we'll kind of get into that. Jesus has always desired for his children to be people of influence. Now to influence is the act or power of producing an effect without showing force or direct exercise of command. Rather, uh, half of them. An example would be having a calm demeanor when everyone else is upset or a warm smile and general greeting when there is visible sorrow or grief or being prayerful and upright in the midst of evil. Sometimes a lot of this is hard to do when you know that there are things and there are influences and there are pressures around you where you cannot form yourself like everyone else. You can't conform to the world's standards of what everyone else does. You have to be set apart. You have to be set apart to the place to where people can look at you and know there is a difference. Before you even open up your mouth. And I'm not talking about how you dress. A lot of people believe that that is the greatest part of how people see you. No, you've got the Spirit of the Lord working inside of you. Where you go, you make a difference. You stand out. I can't tell you the times when I've gone to the store dressed kind of bummy. <laughs> But I've had people just say, you're a preacher, aren't you? I don't know these people from Adam. I've never seen them before in my life. But I'm, yeah, I am. I knew something about you. They couldn't put in point it, because I look like everybody else. But the Spirit of the Lord Amen. is what makes the difference. That is what and how we are to operate. So in other words, affecting the outcome of situations merely by the attitude that we portray. Our attitude is so important in how we deal with situations. Especially right now. We've got some serious things going on here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, one of the biggest things that's happening here are shootings. Yeah. Not a day goes by. Not a day goes by. Not one. Unless you've heard of us. Uh, at least one shooting and one death. This is like the wild, wild west. Dodge City. People would rather shoot you than look at you. I'm not saying that to make everybody fearful to keep people from coming to Columbus, Ohio because the way the media portrays it, it's like you can't step out your door and that's not the truth. That is not the truth. <laughs> They've taken a minuscule and made it maximum. But the truth still lies. It is still there. Mm -hmm. And we cannot be fearful like the rest of the world. We cannot uh, cower. We cannot shake our heads in disgust because we already know the enemy is busy. Yeah. But greater is he that's in me yeah. than he that's in the world. Come on now, Pastor. Well, I go short north any time. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Don't bother me. I'm going anywhere. Don't bother me. Because I got something the world doesn't have. I've got a savior. Amen. Amen. We've already dispatched his angels yes, to bring protection yes. to me wherever I go. Mm -hmm. Same way with you. So we got to portray the attitude that we aren't afraid of nothing. Mm -hmm. God's not giving us a spirit of fear. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't you put it on yourself. Mm -hmm. I did some research in this. Yeah, I'm a Googler, so <laughs> that's just wake up. All right. An influencer is one who exerts influence, a person who inspires or guides the actions of others. And 
A person who is able to generate interest in something, this is what's important right here, such as a consumer product, by posting it on social media. Now you young people, y'all know more about this, I think, than I do. Especially you. <laughs> so gonna be like, what are you saying to me, y'all? Because I know you, and I love you much. <laughs> These are the high, five highest paid Instagram influencers that should be in 2023. This is from a website called Kista. Okay? First one is Cristiano Ronaldo. He's a soccer player. Okay? His average price per post is $3.92 million. Wow. Yeah. So when he makes a post, everybody watches it, he get paid three million nine three point two ninety two million dollars. Make you want to get on Instagram, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> no. Second is Leo Messi, another soccer player. He averages $2.94 million per post. Wow. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. I post something on Facebook. Half people don't even look at it. Who are you? Hey, I ain't making that. Number three is Kylie Jenner. No way. Wow. <laughs> she makes one million eight hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars per post. Wow. That's embarrassing. Per <laughs> post. Selena Gomez is number four. She's an actor. One million seven hundred. $35,000 per post. That's crazy. But number five is my favorite because I like this dude. Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> he makes $1,713,000. This is per post. Wow. Not per year. Not per month. Per post. Wow. See, now this just goes to show you what people can do when they are influencers. When they do, when they say something, people listen. When they say this trend is what's going on, people go to them and do that trend. When they speak, what's the, what's the, uh, 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 uh. Uh, insurance company. Not the insurance company, but it was the, the broker, Charles Schwab. Was it yeah. Charles Schwab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When E.F. Yeah. Yeah. Hutton speaks, everybody yeah. listens. And you have a commercial, everybody doing like this. So, y'all you know, young people, y'all don't remember that. <laughs> that was a great commercial. Yes, it was. E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Well, when these influencers speak, everybody listens. And they do what they do. If they shave off all their head, half the community is going to shave off their heads. Because that's the thing to do. Well, what did Jesus say about you? As an influencer, we're not talking about money. I just gave you this, this is for fun, so that you can understand how important these people's posts are to the media, and to the world. Because when they speak, things happen. What about you? Are you talking about Christ? Because when you do, it's supposed to happen. The life you live, somebody's supposed to be influenced by it. And not just ignored because of who you think you are. It ain't about you, it's about the Christ that lives in you. That's what makes the difference. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. This is Jesus talking. And he's always preaching and teaching and telling people. 
as a believer, he says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything but is thrown down and trampled underfoot. What they used to do in antiquity was, was once salt really lost its ability to flavor, to preserve, what they would do is it, they would throw it down on the, on the roads so that when people walked, any and all of the impurities at least could be sucked up into the salt. What do you do in the wintertime? What are you putting down on your, on your sidewalks and in your driveways? Salt. salt. You ain't using it to season your steak. You throwing it out there so that you can walk on it. That's all it's good for by now. He says, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. That's why it's so important that what you do, wherever you go, whoever you talk to, whoever you see, they see a whole different person when they look at you. When they look at you, they're actually supposed to see Jesus. Amen. Because you're an example. You're the salt. You're the light. You make the difference. The Christian influence, not the media's influence, but the Christian influence is one filled with love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. It should. Because these are the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Fruit is what comes from the tree that you're able to enjoy and ingest. It has the seed in it so that it can be reproduced. Therefore, when you exude these influences, you're reproducing Christ into somebody else. You're planting those seeds into somebody else's life who would not normally know what love is all about, not know what gentleness is all about, never had a chance to operate in faith. But you do. And that's how you are able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 3, 2. I love this scripture. It says, you are our epistle in our hearts, known and read by men. And I use this all the time because I say, you are someone else's Bible. There are people in this world who's never really picked up one, don't even know where to find one. That is still the number one read book in the world. Amen. But people don't want to know about Peter, they don't care about Paul, they don't care about Moses, they don't care about Joseph, they don't care about David, they do care about you. How did you make it? Why are you always smiling when I know good and well you're going through the same thing I'm going through? How can you be upbeat when everything else around you is falling apart? Because you got something the world don't have. And I found this in the message, and I love how the same scripture reads in the message Bible. It says, your very lives are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. Christ himself wrote it. Not with ink, but with God's living spirit. Not chiseled in the stone, but carved in the human lives, and we publish it. We publish it because we walk around 
carrying the spirit of God within us, we're able to influence anyone who comes into our sphere of influence. You're supposed to. Don't matter if you're not making a million dollars. Don't matter if you ain't making a thousand dollars by it. It has nothing to do with money. You've got something internal that will make you eternal with God. And that's how we live. That's how we work. That's how we make sure that we're doing the great commission by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul said that we are epistles or a formal and elegant letter known and read by men. Whether you know it or not, you're Christ's representatives here on the earth. You're ambassadors. We may only be the Bible, or we may be the only Bible somebody else reads. At least until they get to know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Don't wait and pray try, well, you know, we got to get people to the church so they can get saved. Really? <laughs> no, you're supposed to introduce them to Christ. In your life, through your testimony, through your talk, get them to believe, then you can bring them to church. They're not going to follow you if you're doing the same thing they're doing. They don't care what you say if all you do is whine and complain and cry because your life ain't like you want it to be. You got to be set apart. That's what salt and light is all about. So let's look at these two entities. Salt. It is a natural compound that is used to season and preserve food. Mm -hmm. It is an ingredient that gives savor, zest, or flavor to whatever it is added to. When salt is added to something, Change, it changes the complexity and structure of what it has been added to. The object no longer remains the same, but it takes on the flavor of the salt. Mm. Y'all know, know where I'm going, don't you? I just bought a watermelon. Mm. Ooh, that bad boy was sweet. Mm. It tastes so good. But somebody had the nerve to ask me, ain't you going to put no salt on it? Mm. That's an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's an abomination. I pray for you. <laughs> I pray God wakes you up. Salt does not belong on watermelon. Amen. <laughs> but I got some corn on the cob waiting on me at home. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, buddy. But think about it. I just really truly think about it. Taste something without salt. You get the true taste of what it is. But when you put salt on it, what's it taste like? Salt. 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 Is it better? I don't care what you put on. It tastes like salt. That's why I say when you put it on watermelon, it's no longer sweet. It's now salty. No. No. Yeah, it is. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. <laughs> and it tastes like salt. This is what Jesus was trying to tell us. And that's why he used this compound. Because I don't care what the situation is going on around you, when you enter in, a change is supposed to occur. Where there is deceival, where there is disruption, where there is confusion, when you bring the Holy Spirit in, now comes peace. Now comes faith. Now comes love. That is what you bring to the table because you're salt. Anger can no longer stay in the presence of joy. Jesus, can't do it. It's got to flee. That's why God used that example. So let's look at light. Light is a form of energy visible to the human eye that is radiated by moving charged particles. That's why you can see what you see. It is a source of illumination 
Once there is illumination, there is a clear vision upon an object that is being studied. This always fascinated me. Light is said to travel at 186,000 miles per second per second. That means you can't see how fast light travels. Mm -hmm. You can't travel that fast. But ahead of light is darkness getting out of the way. Amen. Yep. It got to go. That's why he said that you're light. Where you go, you bring illumination to falsehood because you bring the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. And lies have got to be dispelled. Because the light has now come to bring the truth. Hatred has got to be dispelled. Because you bring the light of Christ, which is the truth. Which is love. That is why Jesus, he, trust me, he didn't just pull two things out of the air. Uh, you this, you this, you that. No, he was very specific about these things that make changes to your environment and what you go into. Because you are the ones, through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, that make a difference into this world. We are salt. We make the difference. We're light. We stand out. Amen. That is who we are. When the fruits of the Spirit show through our attitudes, we have an effect on the individuals that come into our lives they really don't know Christ. I'm sure of that. We had a, uh, a family night event, bowling, mm -hmm. last weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know we had fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I saw it in the faces of everybody. I said, I ain't bowling. Because mm -hmm. y'all were laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. But I'm telling you what, in our corner, I know we made a difference. I know people were looking at us because we sh shine in those first five lanes. Mm -hmm. That is what it's all about. When we come together as God's people, we make a difference. Amen. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentiles. We've been studying the book of Romans. It's really been an opening up a lot of eyes into who we are and how God wants us to live. And in 2 Timothy 1 through 2, this is in the New Living Trip, uh, the New Life Version, I like this. For this reason I am suffering, this is Paul, but I am not ashamed. I know the one in whom I have put my trust. I'm sure he is able to keep safe that which I have trusted to him until the day he comes again. I put my trust in God. I cannot trust the government. I cannot trust my neighbor. But I do trust God. Because I know he's got my back. He's got my front. He's got my sides. He's got my head. He's got my feet. I'm enveloped in him. So I know that I don't have to fear anything. I can go anywhere and know that my God is with me. And he'll be able to help me do any and everything because I put my trust in him. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm proud. I'm proud to be called, well, back in the day. So I'll keep telling my age, don't that child. Holy Roller, remember that? Mm. Bible Basher. He was called that when he was young. Jesus Freak. Yeah. These are old, old, old names, but I'm telling you what. When you're standing up for Christ in this generation, you call a whole lot worse things than this. A lot. And you still got to stand. Doesn't matter what they call you. Doesn't matter how they treat you. You still got to stand for Christ. Can we all just get along? No. 
Nope. I cannot bend and bow to your way of thinking, your way of living. I can't do that. Because I've been set apart. Therefore, my life has got to emulate Christ. I love you, but I can't do what you do. I love you, but I cannot accept what you do. We're different. We're supposed to be. See, God has placed special giftings and ministries in the body of Christ. I said this before, I believe each and every one of us are born with the giftings that Christ wants us to use. Amen. Every last one of us. All who have been born of the water and of the spirit have giftings that are used to the edification of the body of Christ and for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. You've been given these gifts not just so that you can use them on yourself, not just so that you can gain financial status and influence and, you know, uh, praise. And that's not what your gifting is for. It's for you to use it for the upbuilding of the kingdom and for the edification of Christ. Now, not everyone is called to stand behind the pulpit, preach on Sunday morning, or teach groups of people in Sunday school. Not everybody's called to do that. But the end result to all ministry is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and win souls for the kingdom of God. Every last one of us have been called to minister. Do you actually know what that word minister means? Serve. Plain and simple, serve. And I know too many of them that I'm bishop so-and-so. Are you supposed to do what I say? Really? I know. No, you're bishop so-and-so. You're supposed to serve your people. They ain't supposed to serve you. You don't have a special parking spot. And I don't have a special parking spot. Anybody can park with my car park. <laughs> now, ain't no sign that says pastor. I know some of y'all think that well, I can't park in the past. No, I ain't just park wherever you want. <laughs> Vic is putting it up. Don't you put up no sign saying pastor. Vic I'll tear it down. <laughs> nah. Our whole job as ministers are to edify Jesus. Period. To help build the kingdom of God, Amen. to help someone, to feed someone, to bless someone, to serve someone. That's what this is all about. This is how we do God's work. <laughs> so see, all are important in the body of Christ. Everyone is. No one ministerial gifting is to stand alone. All need each other to function as a whole. What good would the hands be without the arms or the feet without the legs? Yep. The head needs a neck and a body to support it. Yeah, it does. It's a heavy thing. Each area holds a specific importance in its function. Yet they interwork with each other to bring about a harmonious Union. I need each and every one of y'all. Trust me. From the youngest to the oldest, we need each other Amen. to survive. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 25. A little lengthy, but you need to hear it because it is so true. Our bodies, this is the living Bible. I like how this reads. Our bodies have many parts, but the many parts make up only one body when they are all put together. So it is with the body of Christ. Each of us is a part of one body of Christ. Some of us are Jews. Some are Gentiles. Some are slaves. Some are free. But the Holy Spirit has fitted us all together into one body. We have been baptized into Christ's body by the one spirit 
and all have all been given the same Holy Spirit. I don't have any more Holy Spirit than you. Billy Graham, one of the greatest evangelists during his time here on earth, ain't had no more Holy Spirit than you and me. It's the same Holy Spirit. He is alive and well, and he deals with each and every one of us the same amount. Yes, the body has many parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And what would you think if you heard an ear say, I am not part of the body because I'm only an ear and not an eye? Would that make it any less part of the body? Suppose the whole body were an eye. Yeah. <laughs> then how would you hear? Or if your whole body were just one big ear, how could you smell anything? But that isn't the way God has made us. He has made many parts of our bodies and has put each part just where he wants it. Amen. What a strange thing a body would be if it had only one part. So it has made many parts, but still there is only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The hand cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. And some of the parts that seem weakest and least important are really the most necessary. Amen. Yes, we are especially glad to have some parts that seem rather odd. <laughs> some people got big noses, <laughs> bug eyes. And we are carefully protect. We and we carefully protect from the eyes of others those parts that should be not be seen. While of course the parts that may be seen do not require this special care. So God has put the body together in such a way that extra honor and care are given to those parts that might otherwise seem less important. That's the way it is with the church. Some people think because you're a greeter that you ain't got no more importance than the person who stands up here singing. Everybody is important. This makes for happiness among the same care for each other that they do for themselves. This is the, we are the body of Christ. So we got to work together. Nobody is more important than anybody else. When I first got into management on my secular jobs, one of the first things, and I know this was God-inspired, because I think that's smart. God let me tell my people in my, one of our first meetings, I know better than anybody else, I'm just in charge. Church, I know better than anybody else, I'm just the kind of what God uses to give you the word and to watch over you. I'm trying to get into heaven just like you. Mm -hmm. I don't already have it made just because of the matter of fact, I'm more accountable than yeah. you. Yeah. So I really got to get it together. I really got to keep it together. Because God's looking upon me and when I stand before him one day, he's going to say, did, did you do what I told you to do? Hmm. I need to say, yep. So I can hear him say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Oh, no. I want that well done. To be effective, we must be totally dependent upon God. This is a broad statement, but we're talking about an awesome God. Through our faith and trust 
in God. We are able to follow his directions. And those that God has given us charge over. We must learn to be servants as Jesus was. Jesus was a servant. I'm always reminded of the time when Jesus went to wash the disciples' feet. And I get to see them. We're not worthy for you to wash our feet. You're Jesus. Jesus says, if you don't let me do this, then you ain't got no part with me. He's showing you the ultimate example of a servant. No matter how high you are, no matter how great you may think you are, you're never greater than the person that you serve. Amen. Amen. I need to say that again. You are never higher or greater than the person that you serve. And you better serve them with all humility and meekness. Because that shows Christ. They spit on him. They beat him. They crucified him. They hated him. What do you think they're going to do to you? Worse. And you got to stand. When you've done all that you can do, you still got to stand. Amen. And still be an influencer because that shows the Christ in you. That no matter what, I'm standing. Amen. And watch you draw people unto the Lord. We must submit to the authority of God. The scripture says, Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. People want to just hear that. Resist the devil and he'll flee part. They don't think that. Before that can happen, you've got to submit or give way to God. Amen. Let God be the one who stands in front of you. You put him forward. In all your ways, acknowledge him so he can direct your pathway, tell you which way to go, Tell you what to say. Tell you what to do. And then you do it. He's the one in charge. We must realize that it is God's work and not our work that has to be glorified. We must place God first in our lives. When you do that, then you can be an influencer. Then you can affect the lives of unbelievers. Then you can be salt and light in the world and God will reward. Amen. This is how we operate. This is what we do as God's people. We are to bless them. We are to help them. Not just the world, but each other. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. I help you, you help me. I pray for you, you pray for me. I sing a song, well, you won't hear me sing, but I sing a song to you. <laughs> and I pray you sing a song back to me to lift me up, to help me do what I need to do in order to bless each other. Be salt and be light. And let the goodness and the glories of God shine through you. And you'll be able to influence others. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.